a lot of people are excited about this woman. I want to thank you so much uh, for, for oh, that. Oh, wow. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's when I put that, when I, when I sent the text out to people that uh, I usually am on the prayer line with, it's like, wow, I'm Jesus. getting on that. This is perfect timing. And this could possibly be a series. I, I think this is so huge until it would need some more. But, you know, you let me know how or when you want me to to do a continuum. Wow. Well, I think it's going to be huge. I really do. There's a lot of people mm-hmm. saying that they're going to chime in. And so I'm, I'm excited. I'm, I'm, I'm expecting God to do something miraculous. Mm-hmm. Yeah. To God be all the glory. Yeah. I'm, I'm yeah. really excited. And Lord God, we confess that we sin, Lord God, that we have committed against you, Lord God, the unseen, the unknown, and the known, Lord God. And Lord, we thank you, Lord God. We thank you for being our God. We thank you for choosing us at a time like this, Lord God. We thank you, Father. We give you all the praise, Lord God. And we thank you, Lord God. We're so grateful, Lord God. We're so grateful, Lord God. Our tongue cannot express, Lord God. Lord God, our Father who art in heaven because you are an artist. You are the artist of heaven. Lord God, we realize, we realize, we realize that, that the time is now to destroy every work of the enemy. And Lord God, we are so excited about the word that you're going to release through this woman of God tonight. As we welcome people in, as we welcome in our, our family, our friends, our thanks, the people of God, we welcome you in. We welcome you guys in. We welcome y'all in. And we decree and declare that a prayer shield uh, of anointing, uh, the, the firewalls and the triumphant bloodline from Jesus Christ form a hedge of protection around the woman of God, around, around this prayer call, Lord God. Form a hedge of protection around us tonight, Lord God. We are hidden from every scourge of the enemy, every familiar spirit, and any and all demonic personalities that may try to interfere with this call tonight. It will go forth tonight. <laughs> it will be uh, it will be feeding time tonight uh, for the intercessors, for the people that's struggling, Lord God, with personality issues, identity issues, broken hearts, drunkenness, pornography. Lord God, it will be exposed tonight. Shabbat Shalom, Lord God. Jesus, they cannot, uh, uh, every enemy, every every demonic, familiar spirit will not be able to trace the work of this prayer call tonight in the spiritual realm. Lord God, we thank you, Lord God, tonight for the woman of God, Lord God, that you have chosen for this hour, Lord God. We thank you for Prophet John Brown, Lord God. Lord God, we ask that you move, oh, move, Lord God, move with this mighty woman of God, with this mighty vessel, Lord God. Lord God, I've seen her move in the realm of the spirit, Lord God, as we have done evangelism. I've seen this woman of God call down fire. I've seen this woman of God be used by you, God, to scatter the works of the enemy. I've seen it. I've seen you work through her hands, Lord God. Lord God, we know that you have heard us, Lord, because you have brought her to us tonight. And Lord God, we are going to, we are going to be grateful for what we're going to receive tonight, Lord God, as it manifests. Uh, Lord God, our requests, Lord God, are going to be made, made known tonight, Lord God, and we give you all the glory, Lord God. We give you all the praise for it, Lord God. We pray that this prayer and, and receive uh, our answers, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, that we've been asking and we've been questioning you, Lord God, about the hurt, about the pain, Lord God, that we have encountered and we have been exposed to, Lord God. And, Lord God, uh, we know that you are the, the, the one who snatched us out of the fire. So, God, we give you all the praise, Lord God, and you are a confident, Lord God. Lord God, as we begin to release this microphone into the hands of the one that you sent, Lord God. We ask that you cover her, Lord God. We ask that she she talks, Lord God, as a ready writer, Lord God. And, Lord God, we are so grateful for her, Lord God. We are so grateful for this woman of God. 
that she's about to pour into us, Lord God, with no further yeah. <laughs> delay. Woman of God, prophetess, preacher, evangelist, warrior of God. Elder Patricia Matthew. Well, hey, Mother. Hey, Mother. That's Mother, Mother Pat Matthews. With no, with no further delay, we're going to welcome prophetess Joan Brown. Please, please, family, if you will mute your phones, uh, star five to mute your phones. Thank you so much for joining. We love you and be encouraged. Woman of God, you have it. Amen. Amen. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, loud and clear. Okay. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's just give uh, a few minutes of thanks to the Lord. Uh, I take no credit for anything other than it is a privilege to serve the Lord in the beauty of His holiness. But I'm reminded that the scripture tells us, oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for his mercy endures forever. So let's begin to thank him for his mercy, because he's brought us here tonight, because he has something special for each of us. Each of us will have a take-home revelation. Each of us will have something to remember that God did for them on this day. Not me, I'm just his hand maiden, I am just his mouthpiece, I am just his vessel. But on this 21st day of June, God has made his promise evident in the lives of his people. Because he said, if my people which are called by my name would humble themselves and pray, Seek his face and turn from our wicked ways, then will he hear from heaven and heal our land. Let's begin to acknowledge his healing power and presence here tonight. Ask him for a deeper inner healing for our emotions. Let's thank him because he knows you better than you know yourself. Let's thank him because you need his healing touch. The woman who had the issue of blood for 18 years, just imagine the emotional pain that she experienced, to be walking around with a chronic condition for 18 years having tried so many different things and still no result. Let's ask the Lord that if we can just stretch forth and touch the hem of his garment, then we will be made whole tonight. Say, Lord, when you begin to move, start with me. Start with me, Lord God. Don't pass me by. I'm stretching forth my hand. I need a touch from you. I need to feel your healing touch on my life today in the name of Jesus. You know all about the emotional pain that I have been going through, whether it's been for years, whether it's been for a minute, whether it just started, it doesn't matter to God. You need him to come in and bind up the brokenness within you so that you can feel whole again whether you have been battered, whether you have been bruised emotionally, and whether you are grasping for breath because of the pain that has, has been stabbing you in your heart, ask the Lord to heal it in the name of Jesus. Ask the Lord to take you from where you are to where you need to be in the name of Jesus. He is your confidence. He is your strong tower. He is your deliverer. Deliverance is the children's bread. Let's thank him tonight that he will meet you at your point of need, no matter what it is. It took courage. You could have been doing any other thing on a Thursday night, but you chose to have an encounter with the one who is here. He is here to meet you at your deepest point of need. Pray with me, oh Lord, I come to you to heal my emotions. Heal my wounded heart in the name of Jesus. Heal the anguish that is deep within inside of me. Let whatever emotional pain or trauma that I have experienced, whether it's past, present, or even just on yesterday, oh, Lord, I ask for a special touch. I ask for you to heal me. I ask that I will take home what I need and that, Father God, that you have heard my cry in the name of Jesus. I trust you as the bomb of Gilead. I trust you as the son of righteousness. Round out anything in me that is causing my negative my emotions to feel negative in the name of Jesus, to cause my emotions 
to have bubble and have me bubbling up on the inside in the name of Jesus that has me feeling like I'm about to erupt like a volcano. I release this aching void within me and I replace it with your love. I replace it with your peace. I replace it with your hope in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We give you all of the glory. We give you all of the honor. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen and amen and amen. So, beloved, I wanted to talk with you a little bit on this evening regarding emotional pain. Emotional pain and your heart connection. Because out of the issues of life, it comes from our heart. And that's what dictates our emotions. That's what causes us to be up, down, and around the corner. And so I want you to be encouraged tonight that you are not alone, that you are not by yourself. Many people experience emotional pain, and some, beloved, even to the point of being chronic, a chronic condition. Chronic means that it didn't just start, that it came from the womb, that some people have experienced emotional pain from generations on down. And so I want you to know that God has the answer. He is the solution to whatever is going on in motion. My question to you, have you ever been defeated by negative emotions such as anger, fear, guilt, or even feeling inferior, condemnation? We know what the word says, but I'm most critical person to criticize us and condemn us is self. We inflict pain upon ourselves because through that it releases something in the endomorphin that causes you to feel good about what pain that you're experiencing. Now I know that sounds crazy, but when people cut themselves, it's because of emotional pain. Sometimes we we try to fight things off, but with no success. Is there an answer that is deeper than simply trying to mentally reason with yourself out of these emotions? Is there a way that Jesus can speak a word of life into the depths of my emotional despair and bring me to the healing on a deeper level? Is there a form of a Christian counsel session that I can now partake in? I don't believe that I'm crazy, but I don't understand why my emotions are all over the place. And so this movement, this brokenness movement, movement, helps us to understand that our our great high priest, he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and it is by his stripes we are already healed. We have to just tap into that healing process. Amen? So no matter how much we want our emotions to be perfectly, or we want to be perfectly available, whether it be our parents, spouses, lovers, and friends, These people will inevitably fail us. And so the most agonizing reality is that when we, when we're vulnerable and our soul has experienced or is in a wounded state because of human failure, we feel devastated. And that multiplies and takes us to a place of silent pain. The solid pain resides in your emotion. That's when we we cry out for that 
perfect connection. Oh, if I could just connect with somebody who understands me. But nobody really understands you like God understands you. That perfect connection, uh, we, we look for the emotional identification. We look for empathy. That means empathy just means sitting with you. It's not sympathy, but it's sitting with you present in the situation that you're experiencing and saying, I am so sorry. I did not understand or know that you were going through this. Not really advising, not really giving them any information. We're so quick to advise. But a lot of times people just need, to, need you to sit with them and listen without giving advice. For me, that was the hardest thing to do. But it takes practice. It takes asking the Lord to give you the wisdom and the insight on how to just be a listener, open-ended questions, asking those questions that will just only help that person communicate what they're experiencing and going through. You see, the longing for emotional identif- identification, I'm going to tell you a good portrayal from a TV show that began or happened a few years ago called Beauty and the Beast. And so thousands of people viewed this movie, whether it was animated or whether it was back in, back in the day, as some may call it, where it was actually a, 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 a man who lived underground and this woman, he connected with this woman. And so even though this was a, a, a fairy tale, it's a true story to those who, whose heart cry out just for that connection. And so this fairy tale transposed to a modern present day New York City. And so let's wrap our minds around that, bringing together a, a young woman who was a district attorney. Her name was Catherine. And of course, the beast, who was a half man, he was half lion. Uh, he inhabited the underground in New York City because of his condition. And so although there was a lot of lyrical exchanges on Catherine's uh, uh, balcony to this beast, it brought about courage. It took courage for this woman to go outside of her etiquette, to go outside of what we call normal. That was her normal. Because to befriend someone who was considered ugly, who was considered to have these issues, these flaws, this imperfection, she went outside of that. She was used to defending people who had physical conflicts with violent offenders. And so, but there was a soul connection. She had a soul deep connection between this unlikely person that she had befriended. And so even though they expressed themselves through little gazes, just imagine what was going through his mind because he understood his condition. But she did not view him as the beast that he viewed himself to be. If you remember in the story, there was times, you know, when she taught him some things and he, was, he felt so inadequate. We all feel inadequate because our emotion tells us, oh, you're not good enough. Oh, no one's ever going to be with you. Oh, yeah. Even some of the past hurt, it still resonates because all we did was band-aid that wound and we're still walking in that emotional pain of something that mother may have said, auntie may have said, daddy may have said, my dad abandoned me, my mother, you know, she abused me, whether it was verbal. Those are emotional assaults. 
But going back to this story, their in, intense emotional bond was summed up in the irresistible message that Vincent spoke to Catherine in one of the episodes. And so it has become the hallmark of their love language, whereby Catherine states to, to him that there is a deep connection between us, she said. She said, I just feel this inner deep connection to you. She says, I feel what you feel. So just imagine someone just in that empathetic moment sitting with you and saying, you know what, I feel what you feel. Your pain is my pain. And we can go to a portion of the scripture where Ruth and Naomi, if we remember that Ruth followed her mother-in-law back to her own land, a land where she didn't know anybody. So there was a connection because there was no child born where Ruth could have said, well, because I, I'm, I'm going to go with my mother-in-law because of this child, and, and she owed me because so, she needs to help me. But the connection was an emotional connection because of the great loss, because Ruth didn't feel like, if I go back to my people, will they embrace me? So we all have that aching in our heart where we want to be desired or be a part of something bigger than the pain that we've experienced. And if you remember, she said, don't urge me to leave you or turn back from following you. For where you go, I will go. And where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people will be my people and your God will be my God. Amen. And because this fairy tale, it's far removed from the reality. God gave us something in his word that will bring it to home so that we can hold on to that fact that we are connected, even though we are in an imperfect world, even though we are with imperfect people, that is not where our connection lies. People are not like the God who loves us because they put requirements. They put limitations. Well, if you scratch my back, I'll scratch your back. If you kick my dog, I'll kill your cat. You know, it's, it's all of that that people want to connect on their terms. But that's not what emotional pain says. It says that I need something from you to validate me to be the person that I know that I am. And some people don't know who they really are. But when you sit with a person and become that person's friend, in spite of maybe they dance on a pole every night. Maybe, you know, they have 10 children and each child has a different baby daddy. Maybe they have some mental health issues that make you not want to be around. But just remember this, just to sit with a person and say, you know what, I'm here for you. I'm not wanting anything from you, but I do want you to know that you are safe with me. Imagine what that will bring to that person. Imagine how it will help that person to move forward in life. You know, the fairy tale, it is far removed in the Beauty and the Beast from reality, but its view of life happens to be depicted through rose-colored glasses, ignoring the gray shades of daily living. 
by no means or nonetheless tap into the deep cry of every woman's heart. We try to make that inner cry go away by being thankful for imperfect connections. Important as that is, it is it's not realistic nor necessary to deny your need for a perfect connection. You see, the issue lies in how we search for it. If we expect to make this ultimate connection with a human being, we will always be disappointed. I'm going to say that again. If we expect to make the ultimate connection with a human being, because humans are imperfect, right? We will always be disappointed and even damaged. Mm -hmm. The tries for our total, total identification will result in unhealthy dependency on those who God never intended or neither did he equip us to be that, for that person or that thing or that object to be our final place of refuge. In other, in other words, that final resting place. If we're to find a perfect person who will let us have our anger and tears and won't judge us, that will listen to all our cries for help, and they will also feel what we feel and share communion of heart, that someone will never be distant. That person will never be impatient or indifferent when we are most needy. Then we will have only one place to go. You see, the place where we need to go, there is no one who will talk with us, who will walk us through the garden of God's compassion. They won't listen as actively as we want, no matter how much money you pay them. You see... Let's go back to the woman with the issue of blood. 18 years, she was probably ostracized. She was probably rejected. But we do have a high priest who was rejected. He, the Bible says he was despised and rejected. A man acquainted with grief. So just imagine that emotional pain. Despised and rejected. The Bible says he didn't even, he wasn't even good looking, and I'm prayer phrasing that. But I want to bring you to a place that he is the only one who will sit with you. He is the only one who listens actively to what you're feeling. He's the one who understands and he feels your pain. He's the perfect connection we long for and is waiting for us in a deep, tender, compassion knit weight. His name is Jesus. He's the only one that you can go to and find refuge, that you can find strength in the times when you're feeling lonely, in the times when you're feeling left out, in the times that you're feeling that no one really cares. You see, beloved, the emotional pain that we feel is psychological. It's mental pain. It's pain that causes unpleasant feelings. It causes psychological turmoil. We try to justify why we feel like we feel, oh, you know, the devil is a liar. Well, allow the pain that you're experiencing in your emotion to be exposed to the healing power of God. Why? Because when you expose it, then the enemy can no longer bombard your emotions with the same thing over and over again. Mm -hmm. You see, a psychotherapist says that he sat with many wounded people and he witnessed their pain. And what he did was he understood that it was a cry, a cry for help, a cry for someone to just sit with me and be present with me in the moment. You see, when you are present with a person in the moment and don't use words, imagine the comfort and the solace that it brings to that person's heart. Why? Because it says to that person that you genuinely care. But if you always have your opinion, that's just it. It's your opinion. 
you don't really know how that person is feeling. You can only sit with them and say, I'm here. I'm here for you. I don't know what you're going through, but I'm here just to listen to what you're feeling. Emotional pain, beloved, affects every part of your body. We have triggers that we need to understand that causes emotional pain. But as I was doing the research, I was looking at how it affects the neck. When you have that aching pain, then what it does is it's because of stubbornness. If you have some stubbornness going on in your heart, rebellion, not wanting to see alternatives or being inflexible, well, then it causes neck pain because through that emotion, it causes pain in the neck. Through your shoulders, it causes pain there. That's because of the attitude. Mm, that's good. Because you can't turn that situation around. <clears throat> Amen. And because of that burden. You see, the enemy, he comes in like a flood. But the Spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against him. Mm-hmm. Aches and pains have hidden meaning that we know nothing about, that we need to know where they come from, and we need to know how to unlock a happier and healthier you. And so once you learn the sign, then it helps your world to take a turn for the best. Whatever is done in the spiritual, it is done in the physical, and I'm sure you've heard that. But I want to draw your attention to when the spine, which represents our life support, the upper part, which requires our feelings of unlove and no emotional support and holding back on that love, it causes this, causes us in our upper part of our body pain, emotional pain, those called emotional pain spots. Uh, The lower or the middle part is where we get stuck in the past, guilt, shame. Well, if if I hadn't done this here. And so you'll find that the middle part of your back, of your spine, you begin to have pain because of that emotional bombardment of the guilt that you feel of something that, you know, you didn't make a good decision about, it will cause you pain in that area. In the lower part of that, it has to do with little financial support, fear of not having enough, fear of not being good enough. Fear is the culprit, but we understand that perfect love, it casts out all fear. In both. That means accepting new experiences, changing direction. So the elbow, we know that it, it, when you extend your arm out, it can go either to the left or to the right or to up or down, okay? Mm-hmm. So that has to do with changing of directions. It helps you. But when that pain has gripped you in your elbow, you'll begin to say, oh, I'm, I must have hurt my arm, and I don't remember. No, because there's something that, that in your emotions that triggered that pain and caused you to be paralyzed and not moving as freely as you would as if you did not have that emotional pain. Amen. Good. Your wrist. It represents ease and movement. But if you have emotional pain, then your wrist, it begins to ache. And a lot of times we want to associate carpal tunnel because we've been typing on a keyboard or on, a, on some type of uh, apparatus or keyboard that causes us inflammation in our joints. 
But that emotional pain, let's say you've been attacked by some trauma that has caused you pain greatly. Then it's reflected in the wrist. So if you're having some type of pain in your wrist, find out what has happened, what has triggered my emotions to cause me to have pain in my wrist. And then we talk about the knees. The knees. Your knees have to do with pride and ego. Fear. Not giving in. Stubbornness. Inability to bend rules. So you're so rigid. It's not my way or no way. You know, you're not going to tell me what to do. You're not going to, and, and, and we find ourselves in a combat, in a war, when we don't even need to be in there, where we can just step away from a situation and say, let me calm myself down. And let me talk, have some self-talk, and really understand what's going on. Why am I so agitated with this or even this person? when it may not even have anything to do with that person at all. But it's just that because of some emotional trigger that has caused or taken us to that place, then we have something going on in our physical body. The ankles, which represent the capability to receive pleasure, then those ankles... If they're aching, that's because we have some emotional trauma that has caused our ankle and our body to begin to manifest, whether it's from guilt, whether it's from being in, in, inflexible. All of these things have to do with emotional pain. How do we heal our emotions? Well, there are relaxation techniques that help us to emit or release yes. from your portals the pain that you have experienced. You need to understand why you have those triggers and how to heal your emotions. Mm -hmm. And so in trying to understand how to heal your emotion, it requires you to recognize that I have something going on internally that is causing me great pain. Maybe it's a lack of finances. And in having that lack of finance, it's how am I going to pay this bill? This is due. But I messed up some money over here because I overspent. Yes. Well, it's not the end of the world, beloved. It is not the end of the world. There is no temptation that is common to man that God has not already made a way for you to escape from underneath that thing. Yeah. You can heal your life. You can heal the emotional pain. You can find relaxation techniques that will calm you down and help you relax so that you can be effective in the things that you do on a day-to-day -day basis before it leads you to a chronic condition. Beloved, when our hearts are bitter and embittered, when we have self-hatred, those are emotional traumas because we, we, we have the unloving spirit that is operating against our lives that won't allow us to be who God has designed us to be. Amen. You see, when we dwell on the possible causes of emotional pain, it's more likely to exacerbate the possibilities that, well, I'm just going to blame myself. Mm -hmm. And so we tend to do what? We magnify the pain. Yes. Because when we do that, we attribute that blaming to, oh, well, I deserve what I get. Mm -hmm. And when we blame ourselves, then it stimulates anger. And when we stimulate anger, 
that anger is stimulated to punish ourselves for what we've done. See, the association of pain and vulnerability with anger is almost irresistible. It's like they, they, their girlfriend and boyfriend, they come together. Anger has a survival-based analgesic that it's like an amphetamine effect. It temporarily numbs the pain, okay? Mm-hmm. And it provides a surge of energy and confidence to ward off threat. But each repetition with that, what it presents to us is a process that reinforces the damage. I'm damaged good. So it, it's a self-defense mechanism that we use to constantly, constantly punish ourselves for something that we did. I want to encourage you tonight, whatever is you've been doing and allowing the enemy to use you to do to yourself to inflict pain, the bomb of Gilead is here to release you from that pain. Beloved, God has a plan Mm -hmm. and a purpose for your life. He says in Jeremiah 33 and 3, call unto me and I will answer you. Amen. And you will glorify me. God wants the full glory out of your life. He wants you healed. He wants you whole. He wants you to know that you loved. Stop looking for love in every place that there is no love. Because, man, remember, we live in an imperfect world. Amen. And nobody can love you like God loves you. I know you say, well, I can't see him like I want to see him. Well, if you hold on to the fact that he says, I will never leave you and I will never forsake you. I'm here. I won't abandon you. I'm not a bad daddy, baby, or baby daddy. I'm here. I'm as close as the air that you breathe. Because when you rise up in the morning, I'm breathing into you. My root of breath, that you could rise up and become a living soul. Take the limits off of your emotions, beloved, mm-hmm. and expose those emotions and let God heal you. If it's anger that you're dealing with, then what is causing you to be angry? The song that says, why are you cast down on my soul? Put your hope in God. He's the maker and the creator of the heavens and the universe. Yes. He says, be angry and sin not. I want you to learn how to, when you're feeling some type of way, make a paper airplane. You remember those little paper airplanes? It's therapeutic. Yeah. <laughs> and just let it soar across the room. My God, my God, Jesus. Because uh. in soaring across the room, it releases the dendrites in your brain. That, that's the firing station. You know, just like you push a button when you're playing a game. Those dendrites fire and it sends messages to the brain, to the frontal lobe and the, and the back lobe and the right lobe. And what it tells it to do is release pleasure, release calmness, mm-hmm. release the pain so that you can now be calm. Even breathing techniques, beloved, it helps you to relax. You know, I like going and get massages. Why? Because they, therapeutic massages, they know the pressure points that is causing you pain. They know the pressure points that will help you release certain endomorphins so that you can be healed and that that pain can be moved. You see, over time, beloved, all blame and anger does, it congeals into a chronic resentment. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say that again. It's over time. 
Just keep blaming. Just keep being angry. Because what it's going to do, it's going to form like jello into a chronic resentment. Jesus. Mm-hmm. Mighty woman of God, Lord have mercy. I'm going to have to bring you back for the last right. This right, Lord have mercy, this right here, this right here, this right here, this right here, this right here. Ah. Woman of God, you can tell when someone knows their, their topic. You have been digging. You have been digging. You have been digging. I, I, I got so many notes here. I don't even know which one to talk about. But what sticks out to me most, and I'm going to pray you out. But listen, I want, I want to thank everybody that, that joined in to this call. This was a blessing. I, I knew it was. I knew it was going to be a blessing. Amen. I knew it was going to be a blessing. Amen. I knew it. I knew Amen. it. I knew it. Ah, Shabbat. Lord, I mentioned the woman of God. You said, you said something. You said the healing power of God. When you, when you, have, when you have connected with the healing power of God, you will know that you are safe with him, that you are safe yeah. with him. You are safe with me. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Uh, let, me, let me pray for you, woman of God, because I know you release virtue. I know you release so much virtue. Ah, Shabbat, Lord God, Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray. And I confess that the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon Prophetess John Brown. Lord God, you said in your word that if you seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, all these things will be added. Lord, we ask that you, Lord God, begin to give her the desires of her heart. Let them manifest and let them accelerate, Lord God. Lord God, but while you're doing it, God, give us the spirit of wisdom and understanding. Increase it. Increase the spirit of counsel yes, in, the, in the mind, in the spirit of knowledge. Lord, I pray that your spirit will rest upon Prophetess Joan Brown, and it will make her quick of understanding because you, Lord, have anointed her to preach the word, and you have qualified her to preach the gospel to the meek, the poor, the wealthy, the afflicted. Lord God, you have sent her, Lord God, to the blind, to bind it up, and Lord God, to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the physical and spiritual captives and the opening of the prisons of the eyes of those that have been bound by darkness. Lord God, that they shall be called to the priesthood of the Lord. Lord God, people will begin to speak, Lord God. Lord God, as they share the words of this powerful woman of God, Lord God, we bless her, Lord God. We bless her feet, Lord God. Lord God, we bless her precious feet, Lord God. Wherever that she goes, Lord God, it shall be blessed, Lord God. Now, Lord God, we bless your people and we cover your people, Lord God. Let no backlash, let no retaliation come against them for hearing this rhema of word, Lord God. And we wash away every residue of backlash. We wash away every residue of retaliation, Lord God. And, Lord God, we bless them right now, Lord God. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Woman of God, we got to invite you back. Amen. Praise the Lord. Does anyone have a testimony? I want to leave one word of encouragement, and this is for for all of you who are on this line. I want you to practice this. Self-compassion and not self-criticism. Self-compassion. 